My name is Ken Takiguchi from the Theatre Studies the program of this university. Uh, but yeah, actually, I was uh, I did uh, my PhD and uh, Dr. Lin Ben Chu. So, um, so that I have to confess that I, I, I probably I would be the, uh, the least qualified person to speak in this conference because I'm not a specialist of the uh, Japanese traditional performance in any ways. Um, but yeah, as uh, uh, the, uh, the pro Professor Emma said, yeah, there are many the wonderful reasons to be a friend of Ben Chu. But yeah, I would say that you know, there are many wonderful reasons to be a student of Ben Chu. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting me for, for this presentation. So as a non Specialist. What I would like to uh, discuss today is the uh, a kind of a negotiation of the uh, the whole idea of the traditional in the um, the uh, in a very different um, and uh, different ways and levels and on the uh, the, uh, the multilingual online performance archive uh, for which I have been working as a, tra a translation editor at this uh, at the theater studies the, uh, program. And which is called yeah, the Asian Shakespeare Intercultural Archive. So the, uh, the acronym that uh, we call it ASIA. Mm -hmm. um, the, this ASIA is an uh, the, um, yeah thank you uh, is an online digital archive project uh, that has been developing a large collection of Shakespeare related uh, productions uh, staged in this East and Southeast Asian countries. And it currently has a collection of 52. And we are adding 10 more productions very soon. And uh, uh, they are donated from the theater companies based in Japan. South Korea, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Thailand, Singapore, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Malaysia so far. Um, <coughs> the, uh, since his, uh, can you, can you, can you speak? <laughs> since the, the, his uh, very first introduction to East Asia in the 19th century, the Shakespeare has been occupying a very interesting and unique uh, position in the cultural landscape in this region. And the history of translation and the staging of this place that with extent that more than a century established his position, Shakespeare's position as one of the most canonical Western authors, and his plays continue to be reinterpreted, adapted, and staged regularly in many countries in Asia. And a number of productions collected in this particular um, archive, also an adaptation to a traditional performance styles, including No and Kyogen. And James Brandon um, called such an approach the intercultural Shakespeare, and I define it as a performance, I quote, the based on confrontation of the textual values of canonical Shakespeare with the immediacy and the vitality of indigenous theater techniques and aesthetics, end of quote. So one of the aims of ASIA is to provide access to such contemporary intercultural practices through its online collections. Can you, ch can you change? That's right, thank you. And what is significant in ASI is that this is completely multilingual web, uh, the web environment. And all contents are provided in four languages, namely English, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. So it has been working. And uh, um, it, in such a multilingual online archive, of course, the translation plays a critical role. And the translation of all scripts and the data into four languages is an very, very enormous task. And it's mm -hmm. very, very um, labor-intensive kind of work. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a, another member of the ASI, Dr. Lee Ji is there, so that he knows how much work uh, that behind this uh, online archive. Um, <coughs> but however, actually, that we just may start this pro project as um, on the multilingual archive, but in the course of developing the archive, that we start, we realize, we start to realize that the translation happens not necessarily only in the archiving process, but actually the uh, the uh, archive. The, the on, of course, you know it happened in the archiving process, but at the same time, there are many different kinds of translations happening on this site, and they are they are intertwined in many in many ways. So, in this presentation, I wish to explore the different translations in ASIA using the adaptations uh, to the Asian, especially Japanese performing performance styles collected in, in this archive as an example, and I discuss how the traditional performances work as a platform for the intercultural practices in the region. Can you, can you change? Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. So, so this is an example. The all scripts are translated into uh, four languages. The, uh, um, yeah, what is missing? Yeah, Korean is missing, but actually we have Korean uh, translation as well. 
So the, uh, it is the, the switchable just with one click. So that everything, the four languages are actually quite juxtaposed to each other on this uh, on online platform. I'm sorry, I, I, I really want, actually I originally I intended to demonstrate the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, website uh, the using the, uh, the actual browser, but uh, uh, to do so I need to be there and I, I speak from that corner, so which would be a bit weird, so that uh, I, I just um, show you the, uh, the, some, the, uh, the clips. <coughs> so, next slide please. So the, uh, the first translation is a translation into Asian perform uh, traditional performance styles. Um, so this happens when the, uh, these original uh, performances were created by these theater makers. So they translate the canonical plays of Shakespeare and adapt them into the traditional performance styles in their own country. So I would like to take these performances, um, the, uh, both uh, adaptation to no, uh, no style, as an example. One is here, the theater company Ku Naoka's um, uh, production, uh, which uh, titled Othello in No Style, directed by Miyagi Satoshi. And the other one is the King Rear Flash with Shadows, um, uh, produced by the, uh, the Minato City Performing Center Utopia, directed by Krita. Um, in spite of cosmetic similarities as adaptations to know, these two productions adapted <coughs> very deeply different strategies in their translation of Shakespeare into a Japanese traditional performance styles. So even in the, uh, the uh, earliest uh, examples of Shakespeare translation back in the uh, Meiji period, the tension between the textual canonicity of Shakespeare as a Western classic and the authenticity of the traditional performance styles in Japan was very clearly observed. For example, the f one of the first translations uh, uh, of Shakespeare by Tsubo Shoyo, um, 1989 to 1975. The, uh, he is one of the most influential Shakespeare translators in Japan, so far, um, even up to date. Um, the, uh, it was literary, in, in the literary style of kabuki and the jewelry puppet theater known as impon. Kato Shuichi points out that the treatment, this treatment was inevitable because it was beyond, I quote, it was beyond their uh, uh, meaning that Japanese performers and the audiences of that period, their imagination that there could be other forms of praise than impon, end of quote. And Tsubouchi himself also acknowledged the a huge difference in the format between Shakespeare's blank verses and the, uh, his impon translation, but he defended his, um, his choice by stating this, my priority is um, on readability and the comprehensibility, and I adapted it into jewelry narrative style when that was practical, and kept the speeches so long as they were comprehensible. So adaptability and the performability by the kabuki actors, who were the only available actors uh, during that period, um, was the first priority in the very first example of the translation of Shakespeare. Next, next please. So the in, in the Meiji period, actually, um, the, uh, this, this has been covered in the, uh, the morning presentation as well, and in the Meiji period, Japanese government <coughs> implemented a solo and extensive national project of westernization of the country, and the performing arts was no, no, ex um, no exemption. <coughs> And the first approach adopted by the Japanese government was to reform the Japanese traditional theater, <coughs> kabuki in particular. <coughs> um, so the uh, theatrical reform was spearheaded by Engeki Kaiyokai, or Society for Theat uh, Theater Reform, established in 1886. And the movement was aimed to um, uh, raising the position of theater in Japanese society <coughs> from popular culture to high culture. And uh, uh, Western plays were started to be in introduced in Japan in the 1970s to be performed as a reformed kabuki. And in terms of the translation of Western plays in Meiji Japan, the most popular author was Shakespeare. As many as 35 translations of Shakespeare were published between 1877 and 1890. So also, it was to deal with an immediate need of West, uh, westernization of culture. This approach inevitably brought 
a tension between the textual canonicity of Shakespeare and the uh, authenticity of the performance style of Japanese traditional theater. So in other words, such an intercultural negotiation can be found from the very beginning of the reception of Shakespeare. So taking a look at the contemporary adaptation of Shakespeare into the Japanese traditional performances, the tensions of the canonicity <coughs> between Shakespeare and the, uh, the performance style is uh, really a major issue. And uh, the solutions can take very, very diverse uh, you know, other approaches. And um, one possibility is the, uh, using the proto Shakespeare's praise and in terms of the text, the, uh, they can completely rewrite and, uh, uh, the script to conform to the performance style. In other words, the textual canonicity of Shakespeare is rather compromised, and the priority is given to the performative authenticity of Japanese traditional performance. And uh, I, I would argue that the Kunaoka's Othello in No Style um, employs this, this strategy. So director Miyagi um, used the script uh, by Hirakawa Sukehiro, which has two distinctive features. First, the language used was the classical and the former Japanese in Utaibon style, in the traditional form of the No script. And the, uh, the archaism in No, in no was reproduced to, uh, to tell the story of Othello, which gave an authenticity to the production as No performance. And second, the Othello in No style adapted an authentic structure of Mugen No with the prominent first person narrative of Shite with the opening remarks by Waki and Aikyogen interview. <coughs> on the other hand, the Utopia's King Rear, His Shadows, which was staged on the authentic No, no Theater, as you can see, this, uh, in, uh, see, see in this picture, adapted completely different strategy. So each director, Krita, used the translation by Matsuoka Kazuko, the, uh, who is one of the most respected the, uh, the Shakespeare co contemporary the, uh, Shakespeare translator in Japan. Um, and uh, of course, uh, the, this, uh, this translation is contemporary vernacular Japanese. So Krita made some key amendments to the script to furnish the script to be staged on the no stage, including the creation of characters called shadows, and that you can see these three uh, characters in, in, in the black cross. Um, the, uh, <coughs> who work as both Waki and the Jiutai, respectively. And uh, the performance was bookended with a narration to frame the entire performance as a recollection of the spirit of Ria, mimicking the, uh, the basic structure of uh, Mugetno. So in the main part of the production, they, the, uh, these uh, the shadows anonymously speak uh, choric speeches, mainly the speeches of Kent, um, Gloucester and Edgar. By introducing shadows, Krita successfully structured King Rear his shadows as a quasi no performance. Nevertheless, the actors performed in the conventional manner of Shingeki and uh, 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 with its very naturalistic art the acting style. So this, this natural, the naturalism is a very Shingeki inspired kind of naturalism, which is totally different of the, the uh, kind of naturalism which was discussed as uh, uh, the, one of the conventions, a uh, part of the conventions of the, uh, the, the Japanese traditional performance, which was discussed in this morning. <coughs> um, and also, the, um, uh, which was, uh, this acting style was also appropriate um, for the contemporary vernacular Japanese translation of Matsuoka. So that's the overall impression at the end of the day, is the uh, more of sh the uh, Shingeki rather than that of No. So this strategy rather highlights the canonicities of Shakespeare's text, or you know the text comes, uh, uh, comes up the first, and uh, which is the very convention of Shingeki, which um, the puts the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, high, the uh, text the, uh, on, on the hierarchy on, in the theater making. So, the, uh, so in spite of highly Japanized aesthetics on stage, you know, the, uh, the uh, overall impression is 
actually this is really highlights the canonicity of the Shakespeare's text rather than the performance style. Next please. The such <coughs> translation. Yes, the, uh, uh, such translation strategies uh, to traditional performance styles may be difficult um, for those who are not very familiar with uh, the respective genre. So the ASIA as an online platform, the online the, uh, archive, that we provide a data provided by the editors and um, the, uh, to give a kind of an entry point for the researchers and the students uh, to the, uh, the, uh, the access to the, uh, to the particular performance style. So we have four, uh, four subsets of the data. And the first two, production and reception are quite factual data, whereas the uh, uh, number three and number four are more interpretive data. So probably we cannot call it data anymore, actually. This is our interpre interpretation. Um, but uh, but uh, we provide this, you know, the, uh, for providing the, uh, the entry point for, the, uh, for those who are not necessarily familiar with the, uh, the, these, these particular forms. So uh, let me show you the, uh, uh, the uh, one example. Next, please. So, the, uh, so if you click, click the data in, in, in the archive, that you, that, uh, you will see that this is one of the uh, data you will see uh, in, the, in the archive. So the, uh, we observed that, that several performance, uh, type, performance styles, <coughs> performance forms were used in this uh, particular performance. But most prominently, it, it's no. But uh, we, uh, we could find some element of Bunnaku and Chogan, and also some Buyo. So, the, uh, so uh, this, this data was uh, developed, prepared by our Japanese um, editor, who is a Shakespeare specialist. <coughs> so we are, of course, aware that the providing such an inter interpretation can be a debatable approach to the practice of archiving. Um, the, in which the objectivity is usually considered as a principle. Um, nevertheless, the, uh, uh, we still see that you know that to um, explore the uh, interculturality, the, 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 the debate on the interculturality, that uh, we decided that you know that kind of interpre interpretation is necessary to be provided, and uh, from which we can start discussion. Next, please. And uh, uh, the, uh, the next uh, kind of next, le next level of translation I would like to discuss is the kind of reverse translation um, of uh, Asian Shakespeare into English. Reverse means that the, uh, the English is, is a language, of course, Shakespeare originally wrote the, all of his plays. And uh, we are now the, uh, trans the, uh, so that these Jap the Asian Shakespeare are the translation of this Shakespeare, and uh, now we are translating them back to English. So that uh, so that kind of dynamism was quite interesting to observe. And uh, uh, this is our task as an archivist of the multiple the multilingual archive. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we uh, we need to do, uh, find a solution. What is the best approach to uh, translate back into English? Um, the, uh, again, uh, let me go back to the Meiji period. The, uh, the, uh, after his initial attempt of adaptation of Shakespeare into uh, in Pong style, Tsubouchi started to employ colloquial and the contemporary language that became more accessible and comprehensible for his educated um, audience by the first decade of the 20th century. He also set up the, uh, his own theater company, Bunge Kyokai, uh, in 1910, to stage a place in the style that departs from the, uh, the Kabuki tradition. <coughs> so what was later called Shingeki? Um, it was a remarkable attempt to develop a corpse of performers who were totally free from Kabuki tradition, and uh, more importantly, actresses that have never existed in Kabuki performances, in which traditionally female roles were performed by onagata or female impersonators. So it was, in other words, an effort to depart from traditional performances and establish a modern theatrical style in Japan. 
So Tsubouchi translated Shakespeare plays into colloquial Japanese starting around 1909 for use in the uh, Bungei Kyokai's <coughs> productions. So Tsubouchi's pro principle of translating into the most approachable and the comprehensible language for his contemporary audience became an authoritative approach to the translation of Shakespeare in Japan since then, and the most of the translations um, follow this tradition unless there is a very specific requirement like what we saw in Kunaoka's example. So this is also a common treatment in the text of other East Asian countries, namely China and the, in South, South Korea. When the translation strategy is, this translation strategy is adopted, the English translation in modern vernacular language can represent the actual experience of the Asian audiences who hear the lines spoken in contemporary vernacular in their languages. However, the, uh, again, the, uh, the question is, there is original Shakespeare text and in English. So the, uh, the question here is, the, what, the, uh, which should be prioritized? You know, the, uh, Shakespeare, the Shakespeare's originals, the textual canonicity, or represent the uh, uh, experiences of the, uh, the uh, Asian um, viewers, Asian audience in, in theater. So in ASIA, next please, the, uh, we take two basic approaches in the uh, reverse translation of English. So the uh, one is, of course, you know, using the, uh, the Shakespeare's text as much as possible, which is actually quite common treatment um, by the, uh, uh, the uh, Asian theater companies uh, who try to um, the stage Shakespeare as you know, faithful as possible. And uh, uh, of course, the, uh, the next choice is, next option is to translate it free. Uh, using the uh, other contemporary language. <coughs> so um, when it comes to the reverse translation of adaptations um, uh, to Asian traditional performances, performance styles, our editors really has to struggle, you know, the, uh, what kind of approach it should be taken and uh, what, what, which choice should be taken. So let me... Next, please. So let me go back to the, uh, the two adaptations of Noel. So when we translated Utopia's King Lear, uh, we decided to translate it uh, from the scratch, in spite of his faithfulness to the, the, uh, the uh, this production's faithfulness to the Shakespeare's original. Um, as I discussed, the uh, director creator strategy uh, focus more on the drama using Shingeki style speeches and acting than the stylized presentation of No. So Krita used No as a reference to essentialize King Rear by introducing characters um, called Shadows who behaved as Jiutai chorus that emphasized the, uh, possi the uh, possibilities in Shakespeare's speeches. So because Krita did not use the traditional performance as a core of his production, but as a reference. So that, uh, we decided to take a liberty to translate his script into modern colloquial English. On the other hand, that we decided to use the English translation based on Shakespeare's original for Kunaoka's Othello, uh, in the Othello in No Style. Actually, this, uh, the English translation was hard soft. And uh, so that which was provided by the company, but yeah, we had a, a, a <coughs> but we decided just keep this as it is, and we didn't put any our own um, the, uh, subtitles. Um, this is because the, uh, we consider the company's intention was in exploring the tension between the Shakespeare's the texture canonicity and the uh, authenticity of the performance of no. So that's um, um, so that's that we decided to use the, uh, the Shakespeare's um, translation here, Shakespeare's uh, text here, is probably, uh, hi can highlight, can underline the tension between their, you know, the, content, the adaptation, adapted, uh, no, no style of performance, and the, uh, the textual canonicity of Shakespeare. However, the, this kind of decisions, can never be easy and never be clear-cut. The, um, 
of course, this is a kind of reflection of the uh, negotiations between the Western and the Asian authenticities. So that in case of National Changuk Theatre of Korea's adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, the company provided us their English translation, which was based on the original, uh, Shakespeare's original. It is understandable because the, uh, I, I will discuss uh, uh, a bit more later if I have time. Um, actually, this, uh, this particular performance was the, uh, uh, produced with the clear intention to establish Changuk, uh, which is uh, the literal meaning is uh, the, uh, the song, uh, song drama uh, in, in Korean, um, as an authentic traditional performance. And uh, uh, and the, the using the, uh, the uh, Shakespeare's text can underline the authenticity of this uh, Changuk as uh, uh, um, authentic and uh, uh, the uh, established tradition that can compete with the textual canonicity of Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we propose uh, the, uh, the theater company to translate the script into modern vernacular English because the, our Korean editor found the tone of Korean speeches were very light and playful, reflecting the nature of indigenous performance style um, to which the performance was adapted. So, the, uh, <coughs> so uh, eventually, we put two different uh, versions of English translation in our archive. Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, so this is our video prayer, and uh, you can switch the language that are by clicking these, these buttons. And so what, what we did was the, uh, uh, the we put the original the uh, Shakespeare text the uh, Shakespeare text based uh, translation here, mm. and uh, uh, we uh, we put our own vernacular translation under English. Mm. So that uh, so that kind of flexibility of this uh, the, the video player let us just pause two different versions of uh, translation English translation, and uh, the, uh, we can let the users compare how the, treat, the different treatment creates a different um, the, uh, eff uh, effects the, uh, as, as you watch the video. Um, so in this layer of translation, the negotiation between the textual canonicity of Shakespeare and the authenticity of Asian traditional performance forms are re-examined by the ASIA team. So the English translation reflected our, reading, our own reading of the production and our understanding of the negotiation. And uh, very quickly, the, the last layer of the, uh, uh, the translation and the negotiation, which is um, slightly off from the, uh, today's topic, because uh, the, uh, the example I, I'm giving is um, actually a Korean example, but, uh, uh, but let me just briefly um, discuss this. So it's an inter-Asian translation, because the, uh, this is a uh, multilingual um, archive in four languages. So that if, for example, the, uh, the production is a Korean um, production, it has, the script has to be translated into Japanese and, the, uh, and Chinese. And, um, and when the, uh, is the, uh, the source text of the, uh, the former colony is translated into Japanese. The, comple the complex history of the reception and translation of Shakespeare in Asia had to be reflected in translation strategy as an archive. So this is another tricky thing, that if this is not only the East-West -East binary, but within Asia, within the East, actually there is a, another kind of negotiation going on. So the, uh, um, and also the, in which the whole idea of the traditional is, again, the affects the, <coughs> affect the process uh, after all. Next, please. So the, uh, again, I, I want to come back to this particular production, Nomina Nigeria, by National Changu Company of Korea. Um, so when we translated this Korean um, script into Japanese, uh, what we first um, researched was the history of Changuk and uh, this particular company. So this National Changuk Company of Korea was established in 1962 as one of the five resident companies of the National Theater of Korea. 
and their aim was very clear to establish Changok as a traditional Korean culture. Um, and the Changok is a Korean opera in the style of sing, in the singing style of Pansori, uh, which is the, which is actually a very very long history, and uh, um, and the Pansori epic chant was uh, listed uh, as um, the intangible cultural heritage of humanity by UNESCO in 2008. So the, uh, this epic chant is already established as um, tradition. But the thing is, the uh, Pansori epic chant is always performed the, uh, outside and uh, in, in Madan, in the, uh, in, in, in the open space. So which is not designed, which is not meant to be staged on, in the uh, proper um, <coughs> theater venue. So if, when you want to establish it as a strong national culture, which can be staged on a proper theater venue, they needed to create something else. And, and the Changok was based on uh, Pansori, which is suitable for that, uh, for that kind of purposes. Um, so the, however, when you trace back the uh, history of Changuk, what you can find is actually it was a genre um, established um, during the period of Japanese colonial rule of Korea, and the initial translation of, and and of course the initial translation of Shakespeare in Korea was heavily influenced by Japanese translators, including Tsubouchi Shoyo himself. So. The, um, in this national project of establishing uh, Changuk as a national tradition, um, they very carefully and thoroughly erased the trace of the former colonizer, which is Japan. Whereas the, uh, this particular piece, the Romeo and the Juliet, that is using the other, uh, of course the Korean translation of the other script, and uh, uh, which was in the adapted into the uh, Changuk. Um, style, which was actually merged during the, uh, the uh, Japanese uh, Japanese uh, colonization, and uh, which was heavily actually influenced by Japanese shinpa. Um, so the uh, so the question here is, what kind of approach to be taken to translate this particular script into Japanese? Um, so to reflect such um, post-colonial sensitivities of Korea, in the, on on the one hand, and the uh, uh, the historicity and of the performance, and the uh, performance style and the reception of Shakespeare in Korea on the other. So that we decided um, that to adopt several translation strategies. The main strategy was to so-called foreignize the Japanese translation by avoiding the smooth and the natural translation. Instead, we transliterated, rather than translated, um, culturally specific terms in the original Korean script so that the Japanese readers would feel the, a kind of detachment from the, uh, from the uh, rather than the, the immersion in the uh, translated script. So we added annotations by the translator and the editors to supply enough, enough information for the Japanese readers to comprehend the script. So the, uh, again, the ASIS, uh, the video, video players um, uh, function, this is the, uh, we call the notepad, that we can add our annotations here. And uh, this is time-coded. So once it comes to the particular point of time, that this automatically appears uh, here. Yeah. And uh, so, the, uh, so whenever we, the coup is actually doesn't make any sense. But uh, the, uh, we dare to use coup as, um, uh, in, in the script rather than translate it. And uh, we add these uh, annotations. Mm -hmm. And again, in the data, we put this um, uh, data, the, the distinctive usage of system good. And uh, if you click this, it, it will uh, jump to the video player, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it automatically shows the point that uh, this particular the style is shown. So that kind of um, the, uh, web interface allowed us um, to be flexible in terms of the uh, translation strategy. and. Uh, um, <coughs> And, uh, and then the, uh, here, another layer of the, uh, the negotiation of uh, the idea of the tradition happened. And uh, this is how we try to solve um, in, in this particular case. And, uh, sorry, it, it, it takes time, but a uh, quick conclusion. So the adaptations of Shakespeare into Asian traditional performance forms collected in ASI, 
demonstrates a very complex and multi-layered intercultural negotiations between East and West, as well as within, the, the, within Asia. So the ideas and the concepts of traditional have, great, uh, have a great diversity and approaches to deal with the traditional performance styles that vary from theater maker to theater maker, reflecting the socio-political and the historical conditions of the country. They, uh, the, the project takes place. So the intercultural practices, not only by original uh, makers of Asian Shakespeare, but also by the translators and editors of the online archiving project as well. So for us, the key to let the online archive play the law is a design of the archive that accommodate and juxtapose the multiple elements that reflect them in this kind of intercultural negotiations. And as I um, demonstrated in this presentation, the easily switchable, switchable <coughs> multilingual environment let the users compare the translations in different languages or even within the same language. And the metadata, especially the interpretive data, contextualizes the uh, productions and uh, make the, uh, the archive accessible for the researchers and students who explore Asian Shakespeare productions. And the time-coded annotations that appear next to the video provides enough annotations by, the, by our translators and editors. And uh, which let us use uh, Brave to use the, uh, the, uh, the, for, the foreignized kind of translation strategy, you know, that which can be quite controversial because it's not very readable, you know, it's not very smooth to read. But um, thanks to this um, uh, flexibility of this online platform, actually we could break uh, to uh, take that approach. <coughs> so these elements combined, the online archive itself uh, represents the complexity of the, uh, the, uh, the reception and the translation of Shakespeare in Asia and the tensions between Shakespeare's feminicity and the authenticity of the traditional performance styles in Asia. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. We had a, a very clear examples of three different productions, two Japanese productions of Lear and a Korean production of Romeo and Juliet, and a very interesting look behind the scenes of, of what it means to do this complex operation of translation. Uh, both into, into English, back into English, into, in, into Asian languages, back into English, uh, and then within Asian languages. So, any questions? Yes, go ahead. Oh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Um, I have, I guess it's two questions, but I think they're quite related. And that is, your mission is both to archive and to interpret. Um, and I wondered if you could just say a little bit more about uh, at the beginning, I thought your mission was mostly to archive, but it's clear that you it, interpretation isn't exactly archiving, and yet you see them related. So if you could say a little more about that. And related to that is the question of who uses the archive? Do you have any data about that? OK. Um, uh, let me answer to the uh, I'm sorry, uh, not the, the archive, the, the, yeah, the site. To the, um, the, the simple one, to the second question. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, uh, we. Uh, we already gathered, because uh, the, uh, this is a free usage, yeah. but uh, at the same time we request the users to register, because we, we would like to trace, you know, track mm -hmm. them who are using it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, we realized that, actually this is, the, uh, this started around 2008 or 9? 2008. 2008. Yeah, but uh, the gradually, you know, now becoming bigger and bigger, and uh, now uh, being widely used um, in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Eight, the Shakespeare-related uh, courses in the universities, and also the Asian theater courses that are in the uh, universities. Actually, it's quite worldwide. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, the last year, one of the, uh, the MOOCs um, the, uh, uh, that used uh, the, this, this archive. But the yeah, MOOCs, of course, usually have its own you know, other, uh, platform, like EDX or you know, the Coursera. So that, uh, we, had, uh, we made a special link to this uh, to this archive, and uh, they selectively could, uh, uh, can use the uh, one or one or two the videos from from this archive. So in that in, in that way, the, uh, the uh, we are now trying to um, extend our the, uh, the usership, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, we are also considering the, uh, to add some more uh, functions, something like a kind of um, you know the multi the uh, multimedia essay using the uh, the, uh, the some video clips 
and uh, add some notes on it and uh, compose as a, uh, the one the multimedia essay. So this is uh, this is an answer to the your second question. <coughs> and the first question, yes, and the archiving is um, conventionally the archiving is about preservation, and uh, um, and uh, uh, the uh, preservation is always um, the biggest issue for the for the archive. But at the same time, we feel that now the only the, the in the digital humanities area. Um, providing a kind of context and uh, for the uh, uh, to be used as the other uh, educational platform is another uh, possibility uh, which is the eagerly explored in that in that in that field so that uh, we want to hop on that uh, kind of trend rather than you know just preserving the things and uh, uh, yes uh, and uh, there was a huge debate actually within our core team some of the uh, some of the team members were not very comfortable with that kind of interpretive data mm -hmm. you know the uh, um, yeah, and uh, this is not actually, um, this uh, interpretive data are not um, um, quite usable for the, uh, the uh, quantitative, uh, quant quantitative researches actually. But uh, at the same time, um, so that are we, uh, yeah, if I can demonstrate actually, if we click this, there are, there are some new, uh, the, uh, numerical data as well, so that we are adding that kind of um, the aspect as well. But at the same time, we uh, really feel that, uh, that some contextualization is very necessary if we want to let the uh, people use this platform as an educational tool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This, this might be a strange question. Um, I find it quite interesting when you explain that you're retranslating Japanese Shakespeare into English again. And then I wondered, so what are you doing with the Korean and the Chinese translation? Which Shakespeare translation or which, how do you produce the, the Korean or Chinese version of a Japanese Shakespeare? You mean from Japanese into Chinese or Korean? Without going over the the, the English Shakespeare. Okay. Um, thank you very much. This is a good, uh, good question. Um, in China, in Chinese and Korean, actually, uh, Chicken is our Chinese Chinese editor, and uh, our Chinese and Korean editors has an own expertise about the translation. And uh, we know that we uh, that there are kind of a stand, the standard kind of translations. Uh, in, in both languages, so if it's very faithful to the uh, to, to the trans, uh, to, to the uh, original Shakespeare, and if we find it's uh, very suitable, you know, appropriate to use that, that kind of the uh, translations, um, the, uh, our translator may refer to that kind of standardized translation. But a big issue here is that the, our, our pool of translators is very limited. And not necessarily m many of them can translate directly from the source language to the target language. So that, uh, in many cases, we have to do a double translation from English. So, that, so this is, the, uh, I have to the, uh, confess that this is a, a, a kind of limitation. Yeah, you, you need uh, multilingual people and it's mm -hmm. very time consum consuming. Mm -hmm. So this, this is like a, a huge project. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a real nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a bit confused. It's a production archive. It's not a text archive as such, is it? So mm -hmm. if you're putting on the uh, the Othello, uh, no type Japanese Othello, and what you translate, of course, you, it's an it's an addition to the video. First of all, you have the actual production. Is that correct? Yes. You have the performance, which can be seen. Yes. And there's a text that goes with that that can be read. Yes, but uh, the, we always uh, ask the, uh, the, uh, the, our, our donors, the production company, to um, provide both video and the uh, script in, 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 the, uh, in, in the original, or, original language. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we won't acquire the production. Mm -hmm. So that these two are the, uh, so we use the, uh, these two uh, materials, <coughs> only uh, the original ones. But yes, the, uh, the problem is, uh, because uh, the, this, uh, the texts are time coded, meaning that the, uh, it will be shown as the video goes on. So the, uh, if, the, for example, in many cases, the, actually th there are many examples that the stage direction doesn't match mm -hmm. the, uh, what's happening actually in the, uh, in the, uh, in the video. Mm -hmm. So in that case, that we do uh, amendments with the permission from the affirmative company. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So the uh, so our idea is the uh, the full length video should be shown, and also the full length uh, the full script should be uh, provided, so that um, the uh, only when we do this. The, uh, this can be used for many different purposes. Mm -hmm. the, um, you can use this for the, for your, for example, the, the direction, you know, the, uh, the uh, directing course. The, uh, you see the uh, script and how this the director actually, you know, want to transform into the actual performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but of course, it, it can be used as um, you know the, uh, the in the literature course, or it can be used as the uh, for the uh, you know the Asian the. Uh, um, the Shakespeare course as well. So that but yeah, our, our, our basic policy is to acquire original video and original script. I, you go ahead. Uh, I'm just wondering, how, how are you dealing with them with multilingual productions? Yes. So one production that has <laughs> three or four different... Yes. Yeah. We have a lot, actually. Yeah. Ooh, King Lear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or Lear. Yeah. And yeah, the on cancer Lear, for example. Yeah. But uh, usually, in many cases, the uh, theater company has a monolingual version of the script. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the director doesn't know no. what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that usually, when we ask the other uh, script, the, uh, usually we can get the monolingual version. But uh, in some cases, you know, actually, you know, the multilingual version comes in. So then I have to, we have to send it. You know, one portion to the, the, the uh, uh, one translator, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, we need to we need to source the other uh, who can speak Urdu, the who can speak the uh, you know or the Japanese, the, the, that kind of thing happen. So that's why I said it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but you're happy you're doing it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was the wrong question to ask. <laughs> uh, the performance is just not just the text, the script. Um, mm -hmm. Do you? What are you doing with the music or, or things? And do you use the annotation pad in which you show it for, for music explanations on, on the music that is used? Or are you skipping the, the, <laughs> yes. the music part? Uh, well, the music, sometimes they, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the theater company put the stage direction, the, the, uh, the notes on the, the music in, in the, as a stage direction. But yeah, I even if we don't have it, actually the, our data, data category has uh, the, the distinctive usage of the music and the sound. And uh, if our editor finds the, uh, there are some, any distinctive usage of the music or sound, actually we can put the data as a data. So again, this is interpretive, but you know, other, uh, other, uh, we put annotation. Yes, good. Is there somewhere on the website where you explain your thought process for how you are translating into different languages because you're making a lot of decisions about how to translate or someone not knowing how you're making these decisions would come at these translations with a different mind. Well, um, <coughs> in some cases that we put uh, our translation strategy as uh, in the form of the translator's note. And uh, it, it appears in the, uh, the uh, not add the mm -hmm. way, way where you saw the uh, annotation. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the uh, in, in some cases we put it the, uh, as a as a note. Um, and uh, but uh, it's a very long and a complex um, you know the, uh, negotiation. Mm -hmm. So that uh, uh, that we usually have no space to uh, put it in the archive itself. So that's why I, I'm writing the papers and other <laughs> publishers <laughs> as a uh, as a paper. Good, well that's exactly five o'clock. So one more thing. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.